Okay, so in this problem, we're told a coin is placed 12 centimeters from the axis of a rotating turntable of variable speed. When the speed of the turntable is slowly increased, the coin remains fixed on the turntable until a rate of 35 revolutions per minute is reached, at which point the coin slides off. What is the coefficient of static friction between the coin and the turntable? So the first thing you want to do for this problem is draw what's going on. So we have this coin here. And we know it's 12 centimeters placed from the radius of a turntable. So you can imagine this is the turntable and it's going to spin like this, right? So it's going to spin like that. And uh, we know that at a point of 35 RPM, so when the angular velocity of this uh, turntable is 35 uh, RPM, we know it's going to slide off. And what we're trying to find is the coefficient of static friction mu sub k. Okay, cool. So how are we going to solve for this? So uh, we want to we wanna first draw the free body diagram because that's going to give us an indicator of how we actually solve this. So I know that this coin is going to have some gravity on it, mg, right? And it's also going to have a normal force which points up perpendicular to the point it's standing on. We know that uh, just intuitively, you should know that this thing is going to slide off this way, okay? And so we know the force of friction always impedes motion. So if it's going to slide off this way, off the table, we know the force of friction will point this way. Okay? And so there's another force, right? So you should know what centripetal force is. Centripetal force, when something spins, it pulls you inward. But we also have a different uh, type of uh, force called centrifugal force, which basically points outwards. And so it's basically equal to this centripetal force. So you could call this F sub C. And so what this force is, it basically is the thing that pulls the coin off. So it's not really a force, but we just use it uh, in opposite of the centripetal to describe what's actually happening when it's pulled off. And so if we know that this value is going to increase with the centripetal force, right, which is F sub C. So keep in mind, these are just the same, uh, same thing, right? F sub C is MAC. So the greater we spin this thing, the faster we spin it, uh, the greater this force is going to be. Uh, and so we need to find the point, uh, right? Because we're trying to find the highest, what do they say? The coefficient of static friction uh, between the coin and the table at the point at which this is occurring. So essentially, we want to set the force of friction equal to this, right? Because we can set this uh, force to be when this is occurring, right? 35 RPM. And then, uh, yeah, we can solve for the coefficient of static friction. So... Basically, the trick to this problem is knowing the force of friction is equal to uh, the centripetal force, but we're talking about the centrifugal force that points outwards, so just keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, so the force of friction, you should know the formula for it, is mu sub k or mu sub s. In this case, we're doing mu sub s times f sub n. That's the formula. And then this force right here is the same as the centripetal force, which is m times the centripetal acceleration. So uh, really, it's just this here. And so uh, in order to solve for this, uh, first, let's find what the normal force is. So uh, basically, if we want to find the normal force, you should know it's just equal to mg intuitively. Um, but if we sum the forces along the y this way, we know the sum of the forces equals 0 uh, because the acceleration in that direction is 0, meaning um, right a is 0. So we have f sub n minus mg equals 0. So I just summed up the forces, and then mg is actually negative because it goes down. And so moving it to the other side, you have f sub n equals mg. So we know our normal force is equal to mg here. So we have mu sub s times mg equals m a sub c. So notice here that these cancel. So you have mu sub s times g equals a c. So really, we need to find what a c is now. We already know what g is. It's a... Uh, constant value, right? The uh, acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.8. So we need to find a sub c. And so how do we do that? So a sub c is equal to v squared over r, right? So keep in mind, we're finding the centripetal acceleration uh, of this turntable, right, where the coin is placed. So this radius here is uh, 12 centimeters. So keep that in mind. Uh, and then how do we find the velocity? So we know the velocity in this case is 2 pi r divided by t. So basically, we have 2 pi times the radius divided by t, which is the period. And that's basically the amount of time it takes to go one way around. 
And so if you plug this in, you have 2 pi r, this whole thing is squared, uh, and then you're dividing by, uh, right, and t would also be squared, but it moves to the bottom like this. So all I did was take this, square it, right, because the velocity squared, and then divide by the radius, and you get this. So really, we just need to plug in the values now and figure out what they are. So we know what the radius is, but we don't know what t is, so we need to find the period. So you should know that omega is 35 revolutions per minute, right? And we want to find out how many, right? It's 35 revolutions per minute. And so what we want to find is revolutions per second in this case. So you should know that one minute is the same as 60 seconds. So 35 divided by 60 is 0.588, or sorry, 0.5833 seconds. Or sorry, uh, now it's in revolutions per second. Right, and you should know what revolutions per second is. That's the frequency. So the frequency is how many times something occurs per second. And then the period is just one over the frequency. So really it's just one over this value here. So one divided by that. And you'll get your value, which is um, right here. So it is 1.714. And then keep in mind, we measure the period in, um, right? So we measure frequency in hertz, which is 1 over seconds. So it's just seconds here. So it takes about 1.7 seconds for it to go around once. Uh, but now we have t, and it's just a matter of plugging it in now. So uh, a sub c equals 2 times pi. Uh, keep in mind when we do this, we need it in meters. Uh, we can't have it in centimeters. So uh, 12 centimeters, you should just know, is 0.12 meters. Uh, you're basically just dividing by 100. So we have 0.12. Keep in mind, this whole thing is squared. Um, and then you divide by 1.714 squared, right, which was our period here. Uh, and then multiply by the radius again, which was 0.12. So let me go ahead and plug this in my calculator. So 2 times pi times 0.12, square that value, divided by 1.714 squared, multiply that by 0.12. You will get, or when you do this, you will get 1.61, uh, we'll play 1.613. Key mind, this is uh, centripetal, so meters per second squared. Uh, and then now we have it. So mu sub s was g equal. So we would just divide a sub c over g. So 1.613. Uh, and then you're dividing by g, which was 9.8 meters per second squared. Doing this whole thing, you will get a value of 0.164. Uh, so 1.645. Uh, so you can say 0.165. But keep in mind, I did round a lot of these values, so it's basically about this. So you could say, um, just round however you'd like. So you can just say about 0.16 if you want to round to 2. Uh, just make sure you round however your teacher wants you to. But either of these values will work. And uh, yeah, so this is going to be the uh, coefficient of static friction between the coin at the table um, at the point right before the coin will slide off. So uh, this is going to be the coefficient of static friction for your answer. Uh, just a quick over, like an overview of what we did. We drew the free body diagram, and then we realized the force of friction is equal to the centrifugal force at this point, right? And then uh, we just basically set them equal, and then we had to find a sub c to actually solve for it. Uh, but yeah, so this is going to go ahead and be your answer, about 0.16. Uh, keep in mind there's no new units for the coefficient of friction. And uh, yeah, so this is your answer. And hopefully you found this video useful.